Today, nestled in the Texas Plains, the Dallas Cowboys await a familiar foe. Head coach Ray Rhodes has brought a vision back to Philadelphia unseen in recent years. For this unheralded group, there's a sense of restored confidence that is now brewing in the city of brotherly love. The Eagles draw their strength from not only a dominating defense, but a renewed running game. Last week, they manhandled the Detroit Lions, while today an anxious opponent awaits their arrival. Showcasing the league's most star-studded cast, the Dallas Cowboys began this season as expected. But after several setbacks, there were suddenly questions that needed answers. When Dallas came up short twice on fourth and inches, the sight of a divisional title remained cloudy. But America's team did capture their fourth straight NFC East title. Now they set their sights on a much anticipated postseason journey. cold day at Texas Stadium but a beautiful sunlit day as well as the Eagles and the Cowboys battle in this playoff game. Pat Summerall here with John Madden and there's something about this match John whether you're Eagles or Cowboys about the finality it all began back in July and now one host one goes home. Yeah and I think this is the great thing about this weekend where you have you know four of these games I think it's the biggest weekend in the uh, the NFL year and it's it's great because the finality you talk about we all know that the winner goes on the loser goes home and that's it but the other thing is is you can really make it a three game season you know that when you get to this position you can say if we win our next three games we are world champions nobody expected the Eagles to be here in this championship game least of all those of us who follow the game what have they done and what do they have to do to continue? I think that Ray Rhodes has done an outstanding job. Ray Rhodes and his entire organization and all his coaches and their players, and he brought toughness to him. I mean, this is a blue-collar team, and what Ray Rhodes says we have to do is we can't turn the ball over. We have to be physical. We have to be able to run the ball. And I think running the ball doesn't just mean Ricky Waters. I think Charlie Gardner is going to have a big part of this. In fact, Ray Rhodes said last night, of the first 12 plays today, Charlie Gardner is going to get four of them. What about Dallas? Uh, people expected them to be here. Have they surprised you? Uh, well, I mean, they just, you know, stumble a little at the end there. But I still think that Dallas is the best team of football. But they have to go out and play like that. You know, you talk about uh, the triplets. You know, about Troy Aikman. He has to throw to Michael Irvin. Emmett Smith has to run the ball. And as Emmett was saying yesterday, though, he said, you know, he said, the Cowboys will go as the front five go. And I think that's the thing. I mean, you can talk about that Troy has to throw it, Emmett has to run it, Michael has to catch it. But I'll tell you, the first thing they have to do is they have to control the line of scrimmage with this offensive line. All right, John, Pam Oliver's down on the field. Let's go down to Pam. Well, Pat, I talked to uh, Cowboys defensive end Charles Haley, who was out of this game because of injury, and he said the main thing that scares him the most is perhaps the Cowboys coming out a little bit too content, especially with the 49ers losing yesterday. He also worries that if Philadelphia jumps on the Cowboys early, they may not be able to recover. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you very much. As I said earlier, it's very cold down in the teens early this morning. But it's going to warm up as the day progresses for Philadelphia against Dallas. Grays. And this is my ranch. No matter whose brand is on the front gate. This is my territory. This is my zone. This is my planet. Temperature today 27 degrees, but with the wind chill, it feels down around zero. Wind north. 10 to 15 miles an hour. It's supposed to warm up as the day goes on. Chris Boniol, the kickoff for Dallas. The Eagles won the toss. Charlie Garner back deep. Garner at the 12, lost it. Ball's loose. Garner got it back. Here's 
is the Eagle offense. Rodney Pete opens at quarterback. Nine and three, his record as a starter. Last week against Detroit, he was outstanding. In front of him, Brooks McIntyre, McKenzie, Boatswain, and Anton Davis. Ricky Waters and Charlie Connor, the two runners, Fred Barnett and Calvin Williams wide, and Ed West is the tight end. Tight end left. In fact, they go with two tight ends. No gain. Russell Maryland opens at left defensive tackle. That was Robert Jones who made the stop. And let's check out those Dallas linebackers. Darren Smith, Robert Jones, and Dixon Edwards. Godfrey Miles had been in the middle. Jones is back. Brown, Brock Marion, Drew, Darren Woodson, and Deion Sanders in the secondary. Brown goes to left cornerback. Deion Sanders to the right. James Saxon and Charlie Garner, the two backs. This is Garner. Garner, wide right, got about three. Tony Tolbert. Well, the Eagles are one of those teams that script their first 15 plays. And like we just said, Ray Rhodes told us last night that he wanted Charlie Garner to carry four of the first 12 plays because he thinks if he has a breakaway player, his best breakaway player on offense is Charlie Garner. The Eagles go with three wide receivers. Rob Carpenter joins the other two, two of them to the left. Rodney Pete back to throw and fires complete to Calvin Williams. He's hit down hard. Now there is a tackle. Darren Smith. Darren Smith comes up and makes that play pattern. If he doesn't make this, this is a first down. Because Rodney Pete throws it a little short of the first down. The ball is kind of there. Now watch Darren Smith come up right here. Boom. And that is the end of the forward that progress of Calvin Williams. Quick reverse. Deion Sanders back deep by himself. Hutton the punt. Short kick. Sanders going to let it bounce. about the 38 yard line 37 make it Dallas takes over here comes their offensive unit led by Troy Aikman number eight seven and one in postseason as a starter in front of him that offensive line that John Madden was talking about to a Newton Derek Kennard Allen and Williams Emmett Smith, Daryl Johnston, Kevin Williams, and Michael Irvin, the wide receivers, and Jay Novacek back at tight end just two weeks after knee surgery. Aikman leads the oh. offense. And he is back to throw it. Caught Kevin Williams midfield. He has to be a factor for them to be able to move it. 13-yard pickup, first down. Eagle defensive line, Mamula, Dixon, Andy Harmon, and William Fuller, their leader. Thomas Govea and Romanowski. And in the secondary, Bobby Taylor, who will shadow Irvin, Jackson, Zordich, and Mark McMillan. First and 10, Dallas in Eagle territory at their 49. Aikman will throw again. Complete Novacek. About eight. There's an amazing story, isn't it, Pat? Jay Novacek, just two weeks ago, he has knee surgery. They get the, they have the bye week. He comes back. He practices this week. I was out there at practice the other day watching him, and he was, he was running, I think, better than he was before he had the knee surgery. The amazing thing to me when we were at practice was it was cold. I mean, really cold. Everybody else is all bundled up, and he's in shorts. <laughs> Well, that, the type of guy that wears shorts in that kind of weather is the type of guy that goes back in two weeks. Emmett Smith, first carry, Smith gets only a yard. Yeah, and that's where they have to control. We were talking about the, the offensive line, and most of the, the runs of Emmett Smith are in the inside. So you have to control this part. Boom, 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 right here if you're going to get any running. 
the white jerseys have to knock the green jerseys back, and they didn't do it. Didn't do it. You see, they got penetration in the middle. That's the thing that killed the Cowboys the last time in their running game, especially in the second half of the game. Ron Stone comes in, lines up. That's the same thing that happened in yep. the, again in the second half of that Eagle game. That short yardage, again, you know, they didn't do it to Emmett Smith. They tried to follow him up, but you got to control right here. You have to control this line of scrimmage right here. Again, they get penetration. They're going to try and bring Daryl Johnston in as a changeup, but again, they get the penetration. They don't get any trap, and they don't get half the Eagles blocked. They don't push anybody back. John Chet back deep to punt for Dallas. Rob Carpenter back for the Eagles. Jets kick is a good one. Carpenter signals fair catch down at about the 14. That punt was not as good as it looked when it took off. Only 26 yards. Nothing, nothing in this divisional playoff. The Eagles and the Cowboys. Back at Texas Stadium, nothing, nothing in the divisional playoff game. The Eagles ball at their own 15. Pete back to throw. Incomplete. Intended for Reggie Johnson. I think even though the Eagles have poor field position here, the, the thing that Ray Rhodes always talks about with Rodney Pete is just manage the game. Don't have any turnovers. And the thing that he worries most about Rodney Pete is Rodney Pete getting frustrated and forcing the ball. He said that's the thing that he can't do. And when you get down in this area, you sure as heck better not force it. Waters and Saxon, the two backs. Cowboys show blitz. Hand off is to Ricky Waters, and Brock Marion comes up to make the stop. Ray Rhodes, we were talking about, you were talking about just a second ago. What a job he's done with the Eagles. He was named, of course, close to the year. And the more you talk to him, the more you realize how efficient and what a job he's done. Well, you know, he took his team down to Vero Beach, Florida, and he said he wanted to go down there and train like it was a heavyweight fight. Take the players away, get them down there, and have a training camp. And he said, the thing we have to do, we can't have open fists in this game. So we have to come in here with our fist ball today. Pete chased by Leon Lett and down. Pete sacked by Lett. Back at the six. And with Charles Haley out, if they're going to get a big play, if they're going to get a pass rusher, it has to be Leon Lett. Here's Leon Lett here. He's working against Guy McIntyre. Now, you see the big cat there? He just starts it. He just throws McIntyre. You, you see, he took that left end, and he just took McIntyre and just put him right out of the ground. He's out of the end zone. Deion Sanders is deep. Sanders handles. Inside the 20. Tripped up by Barry Wilder, Wilburn. 21-yard return by number 21. You can tell this is a big game. This is the first time the Cowboys is you, have used Deion Sanders as a punt returner. And you always use your best player as a punt returner in the biggest games. That's the definition of what this game is. Tell you, when he gets that ball, he is exciting. They're, the officials are having a meeting midfield. Well, they're saying, hey, do you see the moves that Dion made? Although two of them don't have their hats on. When they don't have their hats on, that means something happened out of bounds. Jerry Austin is the referee. That, that's hitting out of bounds. Personal foul, number 43 of the kicking team, going out of bounds to hit a receiving player during the run back, 15 yards from the spot of the Greg foul. First Briggs. Down. Greg Briggs. Yeah, and any time you see an official with his hat off, that's where he throws his hat when stuff happens out of bounds. See, right there, he hit him when he was out of bounds. He didn't let him get back in. Nothing, nothing score. Score, the Cowboys have the ball starting in Eagle territory. That's something the Eagles are pretty used to. And today, 
is no exception. The Cowboys need to make something happen with this kind of field position. Aikman flag on the play. Aikman throws across the middle, incomplete. Michael Irvin was the intended receiver. You know, the Cowboys, I think, have to make this game a physical game because that's what the Eagles want to do, and they have to out-physical them. And the first time they had the ball, I was shocked that they felt that they had to trick them. Number 59 of the defense, five yards, repeat first down. Mike Mamula offside. Yeah, here's Mike Mamula right up here. Now, Troy Aikman, watch his head and see if, if maybe with his hard count that that doesn't draw him offside. You see when Mamula yep. jumped? It was when Troy Aikman made that, boom, he made that head move, and then Mamula was reading a Troy Aikman's head and movement. First and five at the Eagle 38. <laughs> Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith set on his feet in, inside the 25, about the 23. Finally stopped by Mark McMillan. Yeah, that's what they have to do. Get in there behind Larry Allen. Get in there behind Eric Williams. You know, follow Daryl Johnson. You know, get that type of block. You see, get this type of guy. Get him going sideways and get him knocked back and come off and get on the next guy. And then just make runs like that and just keep going at him and spinning and running. And you don't have to trick him with plays like going to the moose on third down. First and 10 at the 23 for Dallas. Clock running with just over eight minutes left in the first quarter. No score. Aikman back to throw it. Lofts it out to Smith. Nobody's covering him. Emmett Smith down close to a first down. Greg Jackson knocked him out of bounds. Yeah, that's what you can get because, you know, on that side that he throws it to is a side that they're doubling Michael Irvin. You see, they're doubling Michael Irvin down here. So on that side, Michael Irvin runs his guys off, and then they run in behind him with Emmett Smith. Emmett looked as if he expected to get hit and covered up the ball. Yeah, now here's Michael Irvin, you see, and he's going to run off. He really runs off two guys. Yeah. In fact, it's a form of a pick. But he runs two guys off, and then that opens it up for Emmett Smith. They did get a first down, Aikman. A lot of time. Trots out of bounds at the 10. Yeah, real good coverage on that one on Michael Irvin, Pat, because it was a bootleg. He was bootlegging to his right. He had Michael Irvin in the end zone, and he couldn't throw it to him. You have to give that one to Bobby Taylor. In fact, here's, here's Michael Irvin here, here's Bobby Taylor, and the bootleg is going to be coming. Irvin is, is coming here, then he's trying to get back to the corner. You see, Taylor has great coverage on him. You see, he's between Michael Irvin and Troy Aikman. So Troy Aikman couldn't throw the ball, that's who he was trying to get it to. He had to run out of bounds. Second and seven. Evan Smith, down near the five, about the six. Ronnie Dixon made the stop. And see, now they're starting to get a little movement in that middle. Remember earlier when, and the first time they had the ball, the Eagles were getting penetration. Now the Cowboy offensive line is handling that middle so that Emmett Smith can either take it to the right and leave it there or take it to the right and cut it back. And here comes a pretty good test. Third down, when the Eagles can really dig in. Third and about four. Yeah, this, this is a passing situation. Emmett Smith is behind Aikman off to his right. Incomplete and no flag. I think you have to say Bobby Taylor, he's a rookie. He made two big plays on this drive. The first one was a first down play. They tried to get the ball to Michael Irvin on the bootleg. Here's a third down play. Here they are up here. They're locked in, man-to-man -man coverage. See him give him a little punch. And then he turned, and he just got back there, and he got between Michael Irvin and the ball. One thing about it, he's just as tall as Michael Irvin. He's about 6'3". And the thing that he said last night, and Ray Rhodes said all the time, you have to be physical with Michael Irvin. Bonio hits the field goal. That's one for one in the playoffs, but that's his 26th in a row, Bonio. That one from 24 yards out, and Dallas leads 3-0. Boniol set to kick off. Charlie Garner is deep for Philadelphia. Kick short. Garner at 
about the 12. Out to about the 33. Right now, for a McDonald's game break, let's send you to our Hollywood studio and James Brown. At great moments in Texas Stadium history, 24 years ago this week, the Cowboys and the Niners, second straight NFC Championship game. John Brody's pass intercepted by George Andre. That helped the Cowboys set up this Calvin Hill touchdown dive. Cowboys win it, go on to victory also in Super Bowl VI. Let's take it back to Pat and John. And back at Texas Stadium, first and ten, Eagles. Garner and Saxon are the two running backs. Garner hit behind the line of scrimmage, broke one tackle, and got about five yards. And I'll tell you, if the... If the Eagles are going to do anything, they're going to have to get Leon let block yep. because he's raising havoc there. I mean, it was they were just lucky on that that he didn't get that thing tackled. But you talk, this is a way to play defensive tackle. Here's a ball you want to control and get back to that position. Watch Leon let do it. I mean, he just takes it. He just runs right by and pushes Guy McIntyre right into his own running back. He got about four second and six. Waters is the setback. Waters in motion and Pete back to throw. Incomplete. Knocked down, intended for Ed West. You see how cool Dixon Edwards Dixon was Edwards on that? He slapped was, it away. Yeah, he just kind of stood there like he was in his zone and the ball came and he just went boom and just knocked it down like complete disdain for that pigskin. Word from the Cowboys is that Emmett Smith has bruised ribs. And whether or not he'll return is still a question. I would bet that Emmett Smith will return. Three wide receivers, third and six, Eagles. Out quickly to Waters, and he's knocked out of bounds, short of a first down, I believe. And that was one of those zone blitzes. You see that, Pat? They came in a blitz, and they dropped Chad Hennings out. That's really a sight with these, these, these zone blitzes now, with these big defensive tackles or... Are, are backing out. Chad Hennings is about, you know, 300 pounds. And you see him, watch, watch the middle here and watch how the tackle, the tackle block starts out. You see him right here? Here's Chad Hennings right here playing in the middle. That's a good play by Larry Brown to knock him out of bounds short. Sanders lets it bounce and the Eagles down it. They're still playing and out here. Here comes Emmett Smith. So that word about those bruised ribs, the question has been answered already. Cold in Texas, but not on the playing field. If you can move around, you're just fine. Dallas leads 3-0. The Eagles shift their defense. Aikman goes back to throw and throws outside. Pass is caught by Kevin Williams. Yeah, that, that's going to be a big matchup today, all day. We're, we're going to see Kevin Williams out here against Mark McMillan. Now, Mark McMillan is a little guy, but Kevin Williams is a little guy, too. And Mark McMillan is a, is a heck of a cover corner. It's just that he's only about 5 foot 7 and 145 pounds. But I'll tell you, he will battle you. That's just a good throw. Yeah, and that was the thing that Ray Rhodes was saying. You know, we talk about matchups with Michael Irvin and Bobby Taylor. He said, but, you know, Kevin Williams is going to have a pretty good matchup out there with Mark McMillan. Oh, shit. Aikman going deep for Irvin. And the pass is picked off by McMillan. McMillan still on his feet. And cut down by Novacek. Finally. And I'll tell you, Bobby Taylor was there again. Yep. It was Bobby Taylor who had the coverage on Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin wanted to work on Bobby Taylor the last time they played. Bobby Taylor, the rookie, got the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. That really bothered Michael Irvin. But you're going to see him. Here he is. Bobby Taylor again is on him. He's number 21. He's covering him. He's going to go with him and a stop and go. He tries to get beyond him. Bobby Taylor runs with him. And watch Taylor's going to get his hand up there. See his hand up there? He knocks the ball up in the air, and then Mark McMillan gets it. Great coverage by Bobby Taylor again. Waters. Ricky Waters gets it inside the Dallas 40 to about the 38. Robert Jones made the stop. Uh, if... if. <laughs> Ricky Waters would say, just hand it to me. Give it to me. That's all they have to do. 
you look at their first three possessions, they had all three and outs, but they didn't have good starting position either. This time, they have good starting field position. Again, Bobby Taylor has made three excellent cover plays in his first quarter. And mark down that turnover. The Eagles have been able to take advantage of them. That's Garner. Garner gets a couple of yards, maybe. You see the guy that was up there in force and, and maybe the, the most underrated player on this Cowboy team for a few years, I think, is Larry Brown. Playing better since Deion Sanders arrived. Well, and, and he has to play better because Deion Sanders is going to take one guy on one side and most teams are going to stay away from Deion Sanders. So when you're going to throw the ball away from Deion Sanders to an outside receiver, it's usually to Larry Brown. Third and four, three wide receivers. Rodney Pete fires a pass that's caught by Fred Barnett inside the Dallas 20, about the 18-yard line. Scott Case tripped him up. Barnett has really come on of late. You're going to see Barnett up here, and he's going to run a slant and get hit right in here. So he starts in the outside. It's a zone defense, and he just gets caught right there, right in the middle. In fact, I don't know what Larry Brown stepped up on, but but as Fred Barnett went to go in a slant, Larry Brown came up to the outside. First down, Philadelphia at the Dallas 18. This is what Ray Rhodes said last night. He said he wants to turn the crowd against the Cowboys. Rodney Pete gets to Garner. Caught from behind by Lett, and then he got some help. And Rodney Pete is really upset on that one because they didn't get the ball in there soon enough and he and he darn near got caught for not having enough. That's 13 plays. Charlie Garner has got four rushes. That's what Ray Rhodes hoped he'd be able to accomplish. Yeah, well, that was in the script and he was hoping of those four plays that Charlie Garner would break one for for a long run. Three wide receivers, second and long. Pete back Waters. Waters stopped short of the 10 yard line by Woodson and Brock Marion at about the 12. Brock Marion comes out of the ball, but Waters was down. Ricky Waters is, is probably one of the most excitable players in the National Football League. And he gets he gets excited with himself and his teammates. And in that period, if, if things don't go well, he'll pout a little too. Yeah, sometimes and, and, it gets to be a detriment. Well, they're paying him a lot of money, and they're paying him a lot of money to, to win games, and they're paying him the most money to win big games. He wants the, the ball. He's the deep back on third and about four. Pete rolls out right. Close to it. Looks like about two feet short. This is going to be an interesting call. I'll tell you what, Ricky Waters did get a pretty good block on Tony Talbert, and that let Pete get to the outside. This is going to be interesting because here it is. It's Rodney Pete against Darren Woodson. You would think that Woodson would win most of those battles. He did. He hit him, and he stopped him. Ray Rhodes says, let's talk about this one. That's close to the end of the quarter. It might be. But they were signaling also for a timeout. Yeah, well, he it is the end of the timeout. quarter. Yeah, he doesn't want a timeout because this is an automatic timeout. So it's the end of the quarter with the score Dallas 3, Philadelphia nothing, but the Eagles close. Field goal team is in for Philadelphia. Gary Anderson with Tommy Hutton holding. Anderson has been almost automatic and he still is almost automatic. That's good. And we have a tie at three. That was the first play of the second quarter. 3-3 three, three, tie. Divisional playoff game between the Eagles and Cowboys. Philadelphia about to kick off. Gary Anderson, Kevin Williams, and Brock Marion back deep. It's going to be Williams at the nine. Down at the 30. 
Get down by Mark Water. Yeah, we talked about Ray Rhodes and taking his Philadelphia Eagles down to Vero Beach and like a heavyweight fight training. And this this first quarter has been kind of like a heavyweight fight. Like the you know, first the first couple few rounds. rounds, yeah, where you're kind of feeling each other out. Both teams look awfully tentative. They look conservative offensively. Look like they're kind of afraid to make mistakes. And that's that's a big thing about these playoff teams too. That I mean, these playoff games that you know that that the any time you do make a mistake, it's magnified. That's Emmett Smith, and he's got a big hole. And Emmett Smith's got a Dallas first down. Deion Sanders was in at wide receiver. Greg Jackson, the safety man, had to make the stop on Emmett Smith. You know, that's the one thing they learned last time that that if they put Dion, if they put Dion Sanders outside, that it's a little easier running inside because that gets the secondary off because they're worried about doubling Michael Irvin and they're worried about Dion Sanders out on that other side and look at some of these holes this can create. Darrell Johnston. Oh. The great yeah. block. A little of it was Deion Sanders. A lot of it was Daryl Johnston in the offensive line. Aikman again to Emmett Smith, who's hit behind the line. That's Mark Gunn. Yeah, Rodney. Rodney Pete's leaving the field. Remember that third down play, Pat, where Darren Woodson, he was trying to get that first down. And Darren Woodson gave him a shot, and it looked like that that shot that Darren Woodson given it gave him could have been right on his right shoulder. Plus, he had the flu and was weak all week long. Even though they did go to Florida, he arrived with the flu. Yeah, but I think that was the shot that he that third down shot. Second and nine. Johnston was spit out wide to the left. The pass goes to Emmett Smith. He shakes the first tackler. And Emmett down to the Philadelphia 35. It was a great decision by Troy Aikman because he got Emmett Smith on Kurt Govea. Kurt Govea is usually a, a good defender. And there you see Govea is there. He has a hold of him. In fact, Govea had a hold of his jersey from behind. Emmett Smith is so powerful and so strong that even if you do that, that doesn't even slow him up. That once he got the step on Kurt Govea, then he was able to break it. First and ten, Dallas at the Eagle 35. 3-3 three, three time. Aikman again gives to Emmett Smith. And Emmett Smith gets good yardage down inside the 30. This time stopped by Govea at about the 28. Yeah, Govea stopped him after he was blocked by Moose Johnston. Watch this. This is the thing that they get. They get this power. Here it is. They get the lead, and here he comes on Govea. And you see right there the movement that he gets? Now, if you can get a lead block like that and blocking like that on that side, look what happened. Look, you get the double team, then you get the great lead block. They just knock things down. You see Nate Newton? He just knocked his guy right on his back. And that's what you were talking about. That's what they have to do. Here's Johnson. Close to a first down. A little bit short. Yeah, I mean, now, now they remind you of the Dallas Cowboys. You can see they're getting Randall Cunningham ready over there. What they're doing is they're putting some air in his helmet. So they got those air things and they and they pump them up to get the you know that tight fit. Rodney Pete got kicked in the head, so they've taken him into the locker room to check him. Whether or not he'll be able to return is still a question. And Randall Cunningham didn't look like he was ready to play. In fact, his wife had a baby this week in Las Vegas and he didn't get back until yesterday's practice. Emmett Smith gets the Dallas first down before he stopped by Greg Jackson. This is the thing that we were talking about, though, Pat. Watch his offensive line. Just watch these guys here. There's, there's Nate Newton, and he starts with Mark Tuanay, and when Big Nate gets stuff going backwards, it's just going backwards. Eric Williams brings his guy and flops him all the way from the other side. This Dallas Cowboy offensive line is starting to take this game over right now. Dallas has a first down at the Eagle 21. Deion Sanders is in the game. Now he's lined up in the slot position to the right. Now he's coming on a reverse. Sanders gets away from one man. He's got some room now. Sanders. Touchdown. From 
21 yards away. That's his first touchdown of the year. You're going to see him here. Again, he comes in here. They start in motion. Now they fake the ball to Emmett Smith. Dion starts on the reverse. Then he stops the reverse, and he reverses back the other way on, the, on his own. Got a little block with Bobby Taylor there from Michael Irvin. Bobby Irvin's extra point is good, and it's 10-3, Cowboy. That is why they brought Deion Sanders here. To make some things happen. That's the first rushing touchdown of his career. Deion Sanders, bring him back here. He doesn't like what he sees here, so he just goes back that way. So you have a reverse, and then a reverse of a reverse. You see reverse? You start, you fake the ball, then you hand on the reverse, then you have a guy like Deion Sanders go back against the grain. Picked up two blocks, one by Emmett Smith, the other one by Michael Irvin. Garner feels Bonio's kickoff, and he is hit at about the 23 and knocked backwards by David Lang. This team is fired up now. Again, this is Deion Sanders' run, but Emmett Smith had a lot to do with getting the ball down there, and then the offensive line had a lot to do with getting him in position so Deion Sanders could dance like this. Randall Cunningham is in at quarterback for the Eagles. You say you wonder how ready Randall Cunningham is to play. They went down to Vero Beach. Randall Cunningham's wife had a baby, a baby boy this week in Las Vegas. He missed three days of practice, was back, got back yesterday. They start with two tight ends. The handoff is to Ricky Waters. Waters gets good yardage, close to first down yardage. Yeah, we were talking about the Cowboys, though, and how, you know, they have Troy Aikman, they have Michael Irvin, they have Emmett Smith, but it all goes to the offensive line, and this drive right here, I know that Deion Sanders made a great run, Emmett Smith made runs, but that drive there was the offensive line of the Cowboys. Second and very short for Randall Cunningham and his Eagle offensive unit. Second and one, Waters and Saxon behind Cunningham. Barnett was the man in motion. Ricky Waters gets the Eagle first down. Or very, very close to it. Maybe when they mark it. I still think, yeah, he has it. Yeah, what they're doing now is they're doubling Leon Lett. They know that they they, better. that Guy McIntyre isn't going to be able to handle Leon Lett on the run. So what they're going to do, if they're going to get anything in there, they're going to have to double him. We were talking to Big Leon yesterday. He was saying he's, well, he's 6'6", and his weight fluctuates up and down. He's about 295, about as high as he's been, and he's playing well. Cunningham swings it up to Waters. He broke one tackle, taken down by Larry Brown. Larry Brown. You know, in fact, they're going to double him every time and then get away from him. We're talking about Leon Led here. Just, just watch. In fact, they're going to end up really at the end of the play. They have like three guys around him, you know, because they are not going to let him get the penetration, and that's that's the way to do it. I mean, that's smart by the Eagles. If the guy's giving you trouble, double him, stop him, and make one of the other guys pick up the slack. Two tight ends, second down at the 40, and a handoff is to Garner, who with a good second effort got close to a first down, stopped by Darren Smith. You know, Charlie Garner is only 5'9", or about 185 pounds, but he runs inside very well, too. And in fact, we were saying last night that what he likes to do is run inside early and then draw the defense in, and then later in the game in the second half, take some of those same runs and bounce them to the outside. Third and about a yard. They better not run at Leon Lett here because they can't handle him. Waters and Saxon behind Cunningham. Warner didn't get it. Didn't handle Leon Lett either. Like they didn't run at Leon Lett. They ran away from Leon Lett, and he still made the play. 
You talk about a defensive player who's going to dominate a game. Watch, they're going to run to Leon Lett's left. They try and cut him, and they can't do that. He just jumps over, just gets it penetration, down. runs it down, and stops it so that they have to punt. He is dominating this first half. Hutton will punt, and Deion Sanders is deep. And he'll get another chance. Almost broke it. Tripped up at the 21, but he almost broke another one. Which team has played in and won the most playoff games? That's our Affleck trivia question. Which team has played in and won the most playoff games? Ten three Dallas in this divisional playoff game. Cowboys ball at their own 21. Daryl Johnston on the move behind Aikman. And Emmett Smith gets the carry. Emmett Smith. They're finally given Deion Sanders a rest, a rest now. He was he was on he was on offense and then then he was on the special teams and then he was on defense and he finally gets a rest. 635 may get left in the first half with the Cowboys leading 10 10 to 3. The only touchdown by Deion Sanders on the reverse that he turned in from something from nothing into something. And then he came right back and played the whole series on defense and right back on special teams again. It's like the old days. Aikman McKevin Williams. Right now for a McDonald's game break. Again, let's send you back to James Brown in Hollywood. All right, Pat, New Year's Day, 1978, Dallas and Minnesota for the NFC title. No contest. Tony Dorsett rolls into the end zone, helping the Cowboys manhandle the Vikes 23-6. Dallas goes on to win Super Bowl 12. Back to Pat and John. Back at Texas Stadium, and Deion Sanders is in with the offensive unit. You know, an interesting thing, Pat, is Michael Irvin has yet to catch a ball. Bobby Taylor's done a good job. Emmett Smith outside the 35. Again, our Affleck trivia question, which team has played in and won the most playoff games? And the answer, the Dallas Cowboys have played in 47 playoff games. They have 28 victories. And so you'd think you get there a lot, you play a lot. Yeah, you? And you'd think another team that would be up there is the Miami Dolphins and, you know, and Don Shula and the job that he's done over his career winning more games than any coach in the history of the game. And he retired this year, and he was one of the great ones. We wish him our best. Here's Aikman going deep. He's got a man wide open this time. Kevin Williams was behind everybody. Michael Zordich finally knocked him out of bounds, but that's got to be a mix-up in coverage somewhere for him to get that open. Uh, watch him. He's, he's right out here, and it looks like one of those things that McMillan was playing zone, and he expected a safety. He expected Michael Zordich to get in there behind him, and Zordich didn't get over, but I think even if it were a zone, McMillan, if he's going to do that, he has to bump Williams when he comes off the line. He just kind of let him go, and Zordich didn't get over, and Troy Aikman was smart enough to find it, see it, and get it to Kevin Williams. On first down, Aikman fakes to Smith. Up the middle, Darrell Johnson, and the moose is down to one. Romanowski tripped him up. Now the Cowboys are starting to look like the Cowboys. They, they, they want to stop Michael Irvin. They want to double him. They want to do all these things. Then they start going to Kevin Williams. They go to Jay Novacek. And now they go to Daryl Johnston. But you're just going to get the Moose here. Now you don't expect this. You don't expect from the I formation the Moose to get deep. He runs a flat, and then he just comes up and then runs into the post. That is a heck of a pattern by a fullback. It started yep. to a flat, then up, then post. Woo! Who nobody, would have thought? Nobody knew the ball was loose, but he was down. Johnston with Kevin. Emmett Smith and Emmett Smith. Touchdown, Dallas. Now the Cowboys are looking like the Cowboys. got 25 touchdowns to set an all-time record in the regular season. 
And he is proud of that. And should be. Bonio for the extra point. He's also proud of the touchdown he just scored. On that drive, Aikman was three out of three for 72 yards. Big one to Williams, big one to Johnston. Against the Eagles, the total offense for the Cowboys was 196 yards. That was in Philadelphia. They've already exceeded that today. Yeah, the Cowboys have had that, you know, you know, that bye week, that week off, and it's starting to show. They look very, very sharp and very, very fresh in the second period. The ball bounces between Garner's leg. He's down to one. Robert Bailey knocks Garner down at the one-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will start. And a kickoff isn't like a punt. You can't let it roll. You have to feel the kickoff. This thing takes a funny bounce. Charlie Garner, I think, intended to field it all the way. Then he looked and it went between his legs. Now, he has to pick up that ball because if he doesn't, if the Cowboys get that ball, it's live, and it would have been the Cowboys' ball right there. They finally mark it down at the three, but the Eagles start deep in their own territory, and Randall Cunningham is still their quarterback. He's been in situations like this before, but he hasn't practiced this week, as John Madden pointed out a moment ago. Only once. Cunningham goes deep. Incomplete, but flags all over the place. Chris T. Jones was the intended receiver. This is going to be an interesting one, but when they say bring it up here, it's going to be against the Cowboys. It's going to be on defense. When the official throws it and stays there and Last says, come on here. Number 24 of the defense. First that, down. That's going to be against the against the defense. Here's Larry Brown right here. Chris T. Jones is number 82. And you see now, now they're beyond the five yards. The ball is in the air. I don't know. There's just a lot of bumping there. That This is a tough thing. I mean, this... They have to do something in the offseason yeah. on this pass interference rule. You're right about that. Here's Cunningham back to throw. Chase from behind, but Cunningham can run and does. Brock Marion tripped him up. Randall Cunningham, because of the injury to Rodney Pete, is the quarterback. And here is where Darren Woodson hit Pete as he scrambled for a first down. Yeah, this was a third down play. Darren Woodson hits him right there at the end of the play. I guess just knocked him out. Darren Woodson has that kind of power. We right. talk about fights and heavyweight fights and getting ready for him. That was a heavyweight punch by Darren Woodson. Cunningham gets to Ricky Waters. Waters gets an eagle first down, crosses the 50, gets into Dallas territory. Remember the Cowboys left led the last time these two teams met 17-6 at the half at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia the Eagles came back to win it and I'm sure that that's what both coaches are thinking about right now and I'm sure both coaches are going to talk about that at halftime you know Barry Switzer is going to say hey you know we had this it was like this last time we let it go away Ray Rhodes is going to say hey we were here before and we whipped them so let's go do it again three wide receivers Carpenter is the man in motion. Cunningham back to throw. The blitz is on. They had a screen call. They had a right call. But Cunningham didn't have time to get it to Waters. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's been that Leon Lett is all over the place. I mean, he didn't come in that rush, but he was the guy that read that screen. Watch Leon Lett here. He's going to see the screen. They got the blitz. He goes in. He's going back in coverage now. That's one of those, those zone blitzes. And then he was out there reading that screen. So did Shante Carver. Yeah, I think I think if I were the Cowboys, I think I would let Leon let rush the passer every down. I don't think I'd drop him out of there. Second I'd drop down. the other guys out, not Leon. Second and ten. Cunningham back to throw. Protection is pretty good this time, but the pass is not. Ricky Waters, the intended receiver, covered by Darren Smith and covered very well. And I think Cunningham was probably smart not to throw a good pass there because, like you said, Darren Smith was right there with Ricky Waters. If he would have thrown the pass well, I think he was probably throwing it as much away from Darren Smith as he was trying to get it to Ricky Waters. Brings up third and ten. They'll get one more play before the two-minute warning. 17-3, Cowboys leading.
Three wide receivers. Cunningham back to throw it. Rushed by Tolbert, and Tolbert had him. Fumble. But he was down. Antone Davis had trouble with Tony Tolbert in the first game, too. Tolbert that time just went right around Antone Davis. And you're going to see, here's Antone Davis right here. Watch Tolbert. He just hits him, just goes right around him, right beyond him. Woo. The Cowboys are coming on defense now. Two-minute warning. 17-3, Cowboys lead it. Don't miss the excitement as the playoff race concludes with the final showdown on the road to the Super Bowl. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Deion Sanders back deep. And the whole stadium is yelling, Deion, 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 and he was, he was leading them there. Yep. Hutton back to punt it for the Eagles. Good kick, and Sanders will have his chance. He gets away from it now, and it passes into the end zone. Uh, he just tricked him down. He was trying to stand there, stand there, stand there as long as he could. Knew that he was on the 10-yard line. The old rule, if you're on the 10 and the ball goes over your head, just let it go into the end zone because you get the ball back on the 20. He tricked me, too. You know, we talk about matchups. That was that was one right there that we just saw that it was is, is one of the good ones today when Eric Williams, and we'll see it right now, Eric Williams going against William Fuller. That's a real battle. I remember three years ago where oh, Eric yeah. Williams beat William Fuller about as bad as an offensive tackle can beat a defensive end. Well, he took himself out of the game finally. Eric Williams isn't what Eric Williams used to be, but he's still awfully tough and awfully good. Emmett Smith stopped by William Thomas. Because they've been going after it all day. You know, every time that they pass, it's been it's been Fuller against Eric Williams. And again, I think Eric Williams is winning that battle today, as is the whole, especially in this second period, as is the whole offensive line of the Cowboys. Second and seven. Kevin Williams comes wide left. Irvin's up to the right. Aikman's back to throw it. Lofts it in the direction of Michael Irvin, incomplete. A minute and six seconds left to play in the first half. Yeah, we were talking about the battle. Here's Eric Williams. Here's William Fuller. Now, now just, just watch how they keep going. This was one in the last series that was thrown to Daryl Johnston. But what? Battle, battle, battle. Balls thrown. They don't know from that. I mean, watch. I mean, they're still going. One got one face mask. The other guy got the other guy's face mask. Referee in there plays over. I mean, but those guys just go after it. Like, Eric... Williams said, when I put a helmet on, I'm a different guy. Deion Sanders guy. is lined up in the slot to the left as the Eagles quickly take a timeout. Maybe they weren't quite ready for it. So it's a Philadelphia timeout. They have two left. Any way they can. It's the Little Caesars 12th annual All Madden team. Yeah, last time we were here, we raced that blimp, you know that? I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah we raced it and beat it. Was it easy? No, no, it wasn't easy. From here to Tyler, it was it was tied. Then we got him after we got to Tyler. Well, that's not very far. <laughs> I know it. It's still Texas. Eggman gives it to Emmett Smith. And Emmett. Is short of a first down by a couple. You just see how how strong Larry Allen is. I mean, I think that he's not only the the, the best guard in, in football, but one of the best offensive linemen. Period. But just watch him when he pulls out here, and he's going to come out here, and he just stays on his feet and just just kind of bumps the guy and just knocks him off. Watch 73 here. Watch him right there. Boom. So he just knocks him off, and then just that little bump. That creates about a five-yard running space for Emmett Smith. So the Cowboys will have to front, have to punt. Rob Carpenter is back deep. This is John Chet. And his kick is a, chases Carpenter all the way back to his 21-yard line where he slipped down. There's a flag thrown 
over in front of the Eagle bench. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's a flag and two hats. So it's going to be one of those things out of bounds again because it was on the outside guy running down the field. So when you see the officials again, flags and hats, you see two hatless officials, that means something bad happened out of bounds. <laughs> Because the guy in this weather doesn't want to throw his hat. Because if you lose your heat, you always lose it through the top of your head. So you so need you, a hat. You always want to keep your hat on. You don't want to throw your hat unless you really have to. Well, a personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the receiving team. Number 45 going out of bounds and hit a kicking team player while the kick, during the kick. The enforcement is from the spot where possession changed. Half the distance to the goal. See here, the, the guy going down the field gets hit out of bounds right there. That's, That's what twice we had that happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was two times. You yeah. see the officials without their hats. You know that's what they're going to call. It's, we haven't seen that call, but once or twice all year long and twice already in the first half of this game. See, 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 see how heat does come out of the top of your head? Look at it. Just coming off of Nate's head there. That's where it escapes. If you have heat in your body and you want to let it out, you take your hat off. Yeah, you know, what you could do is, is you could have a barbecue on that head. Nate's got a lot of room to let it out. Yeah, I mean you could cook like some burgers on there. Look at now you're talking. I mean this is football. When you yeah. got steam coming out of your head and your mouth, now you're talking football. You're controlling that offensive line. This is what it's all about. It's a playoff game. If you win, you go to the championship. Well, what are you talking about? Here's Randall Cunningham back to throw. Pass is complete to Calvin Williams. Enough for an Eagle first down. They used one timeout. So they have two left. Now he's in a hurry up. Cunningham. Pass caught. Calvin Williams. The receiver now they take their second time out. One thing for not for not practicing and for not playing much this year, Randall Cunningham looks looks pretty sharp and pretty confident. Yeah, his throws have been very sharp. And he looks relaxed and maybe sometimes, you know, that does help some guys when they when they don't know they're gonna play because they don't have all that, you know, all that tenseness build up and all that stuff. They're kinda in fact, uh, Randall Cunningham was so relaxed they had to pump air in his helmet before they put him in. Don't forget, coming up on the Dockers halftime report, J.B. Terry Howie and Jimmy first half highlights, Indianapolis, Kansas City preview, and Brett Favre will be interviewed. Yeah, what a what a job Brett Favre has done in the Green Bay Packers. Congratulations to them, to Mike Holmgren, and I'll tell you another guy in that organization who really doesn't get enough credit is Ron Wolf. Right. He's a guy that, you know, brought Mike Holmgren in, put that team together, traded for Brett Favre. And I'll tell you, he, he has done an excellent job in that whole organization. And to see them in a championship game, it, and it gives you goosebumps, reminds you of the old days. Second and one. 21 seconds left to play in the first half. 17-3. Cunningham fires complete. Fumble. Picked up by Fred Barnett. And the Eagles strike quickly. The clock's still running. They haven't called the timeout yet. Now it, the clock has stopped with eight seconds. Like I said, Randall Cunningham looks very sharp, very cool, very confident. And he's getting his receivers open. And, you know, this is something that they can regroup at halftime and, and maybe put some passing together. Because they thought they were going to have to run to win this game but the way they're getting receivers open and Randall Cunningham is throwing that may be a bigger part of the second half of this game that was Rob Carpenter who made the reception and that is Carpenter that they're checking out right now it's also Rob Carpenter who fumbled you're gonna see the hit right there it's that third hit he had one in front of him a second one in front of him and then it was the it was a third one that really got him that was the, the recovery by Barnett. The reception was by Carpenter. Yeah, you can see Carpenter right there. They're, they're getting the back of his right shoulder. See the, the, the miss there, then he gets off of that one. Then there's that hit right there. In fact, it was right on his right shoulder. 
was a hit there by Darren Smith that caused both the fumble and the injury. And they're rubbing the area right about the spot that Darren Smith put his helmet right. on Rob Carpenter. Ten seconds remain. They put two back on the clock. 17 to 3. You remember the score was 17 6 in Philadelphia. The fake is to Warren. And the pass from Cunningham in the direction of Chris T. Jones is incomplete. Now, you know the Pat, the reason that they moved that ball back that, that on the on the fumble, on the fourth down fumble in the last two minutes, the only guy that can recover it is the guy that fumbled it. The only guy that can advance it is the guy that fumbled it. So Barnett cannot advance it. The Eagle, who is being looked at now, is Mo Elena Weeby, the backup left tackle. Long a redskin. Another of them, those players brought to Philadelphia by Ray Rhodes. Six seconds, 17-3. There's Mo Elowanibi right up there. He's the, he's the left tackle, and he starts to block a stunt right there. And you see what happened is he got, he got his left leg up in the air, and then when he went to plant it, he got pushed. And that whole thing just collapsed. Watches him. He gets, he's starting to get pushed there by Chad Hennings. And he gets it up in the air. And then as he puts it down, they just, Chad Hennings just overpowers him and powers him right into the ground. Mo is still down. Don't forget, next Sunday on Fox, it's the NFC Championship game as the Green Bay Packers take on either the Dallas Cowboys or the Philadelphia Eagles. So don't miss, don't miss the excitement as the playoff race concludes with the final showdown on the road to the Super Bowl. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. If Dallas wins, Green Bay will come here. If Philadelphia wins, Green Bay will entertain. You can see they're bringing the card out there for Mo Elowanibi. The Eagles are at this point here 54 yards. If they were to kick a field goal or try a field goal, it would be a 54 yard field goal for Gary Anderson. With five seconds left, it's a it's a tough situation whether they can get another play and still have time to try the field goal. 54 yards, if they don't move it, is a little long for him. Yeah, and then He's five... Very accurate. But right, right, and five seconds is a little short. Yeah. You know, so you're, you're, you're kind of in the bind there, and it looks like they're not even going to try Gary Anderson here. That uh, you know, You're not going to get both. You're not going to have time to... Because they have no timeouts, it's going to be tough to complete a pass, uh, get it out of bounds, and then get in there within five seconds. Anderson is 0 for 3 this year during the regular season, over 50 yards. You know, and Chad Hennings is, is so strong as we see Mo Elowanibi going off the field. That, that was just one of those things where you're, you're blocking a very strong man like maybe the strongest man on the on this Dallas Cowboy team and you're playing on artificial turf and you don't have your feet in the proper position. A lot of times you get caught where the only thing that can go is a joint. A little rough with Mo. Dropping him down on the stretcher. There's, there's one of the real good trainers in this league. Let's go down to Pam Oliver and find out if we can what's going on with Rodney Pete. Well, Pat, we've been stationed outside of the locker room the whole time, and what I understand is that he's just been lying down the whole time. He still has his uniform on. Apparently that kick to the head uh, did a, some damage. We're waiting for further word. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. As John Madden was just saying to me a minute ago, they probably, almost certainly now, 
nothing. We won't see Rodney Pete until the end of the half if we do then. Well, you know, a lot of those things, when, when someone gets kicked in the head uh, or, you know, a head injury, you're going to take every precaution you can. And so you get him in there and just tell him to rest, and then you look it over and evaluate it at halftime. And see that Mo Elowinibi, that this is much more serious than a halftime evaluation. He, he's not going to be back. That is a Texas-sized chariot, chariot he's in. That's almost as big as your bus. Yeah. Don't forget again, coming up, uh, the Dockers halftime, J.B. Terry... How and Jimmy scores and highlights. Interview with Brett Favre. You know, I was listening yesterday to an interview with Steve Young. The 49ers deserve a lot of credit as well for being the class organization that they are and the kind of people that play for that team and work for that team. They did a heck of a job, too, defending. I'm sure they don't think so today, but no, and you know they they lost that last game to Atlanta, and and that's what gave the Dallas Cowboys the home field advantage throughout if they win today. Well, you think about the people they lost, Ricky Waters, who's here, and the starting fullback, William Floyd. How about the other guy who's here, Deion Sanders? Yeah, yeah. they lost two pretty big guys that are here today. Second and ten. Cunningham, the quarterback, back to throw it. Going deep. Deion Sanders. And there is no flag. That's what they were hoping for because you know that the the end of the, the game or the half can't end on a penalty. There was no penalty, so the half was ended. Pass was intended for Calvin Williams. Sanders is back there with him. That's the end of the half. The Dallas Cowboys lead the Philadelphia Eagles 17 to 3 at Texas Stadium. Texas Stadium, the Cowboys lead the Eagles 17 to 3. Randall Cunningham at quarterback when the first half came to a conclusion. This is Rodney Pete. As he scrambled for a first down, stopped by and hit by Darren Woodson. And here is another look at it. Woodson, a powerful guy. And he stopped Pete short of the first down. Let's go down for a report on the condition of Rodney Pete to Pam Oliver. Well, Pat, as you know, Rodney Pete has been in that locker room for a very long time. He had on his uniform for most of that time. The word is that he will not return. He is out with a concussion. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. So it will be Randall Cunningham for the Eagles for, I guess, the rest of the second half. They do have a third quarterback, but Cunningham will carry the load 17 to 3. The home team is 28 and 5 when they lead. There's Randall Cunningham, number 12. His wife, John Madden, said to you earlier, had a baby this past week. He left their training base in Vero Beach, went to Las Vegas. Just got back and had one day with the team. Yeah, they thought that he would be back for practice on Friday. He got back late Friday, didn't make practice on Friday, but did make a short workout that they had there yesterday before they came here to Dallas. Anderson's kickoff is short. Going to be handled by Kevin Williams. Got a room. Got some room. Hit by Rob Carpenter. And that was almost a touchdown saving tackle. Halftime statistics. You know, if you look at, at, at the last time they played, the, the game was a lot like this. I mean, you look at the score it was 17 to 6. Today it's 17 to 3. The rush yards were about the same. You can see the, the, the pass yards today are, are a lot more. But, you know, and the first downs were about the same. Time of possession is close. And this was the way that the first half was played last time. And, of course, the Cowboys don't want the second half to be played like it was last time, and the Eagles do. Eggman gets to Emmett Smith. Left side for about three. Kurt Govea made the stop. Mo Elowanibi, who you might recall was injured with about ten seconds left to go in the first half, has knee damage and will not return. Yeah, he tore a patella tendon. Watch Larry Allen here. I mean, when he just 
get someone. I mean, they get on Andy Harmon, and poor Andy Harmon, you know, tries to get turned, and the only thing that he can do is, in the old days, you used to tell the nose tag like that, grab grass, just get down and grab grass, and artificial turf, just, just get down and grab some rug. This is Emmett Smith behind Larry Allen. And two eagle territory. <laughs> Larry Allen is still hitting the guys. He got little Mark McMillan who weighs 145 pounds. That was the last one. But watch him here when he pulls. I mean, you know, when he pulls and hits a guy, he doesn't slow up or stop. I mean, he's like 320 pounds a guy coming. Now, boom, he, I mean, they turn and twist and get out of the way. Then he just keeps, he keeps <laughs> going, and then he ends up hitting old McMillan. He is a house and a horse and a good player. Yeah, he's, he's, if he doesn't watch out, he's going to be a, a great player. Aikman back to throw it. Eagle had a rush on. It's for Kevin Williams. He's open at the 15, down to the 14. That's the way you have that big guard come and hit Mark McMillan, who weighs 145 pounds, and then you throw a, a deep pass on him. Troy Aikman made a heck of a move there because there was a blitz coming free, and he had to get away from that. Then he had to find Kevin Williams, who beat Mark McMillan. Watch, he's going to get a blitz straight up the middle there. He gets that, he gets out of the way, dodges that one, looks, finds Kevin Williams, who has beaten Mark McMillan, and he makes a perfect throw to him. You have to give a lot of credit to that one to Troy Aikman because they left one for him. At the 14, first and 10 Dallas. Down near the 10. Daniel Stubbs made the stop. You know, one of the things that we said today is if they're going to double Michael Irvin and take him out of the game, which they have, he hasn't caught any passes, then Kevin Williams had to come up big. And he has, look, five catches, 104 yards, average 20.8. Those are Alvin Harper-type numbers. That's the shoes that he has filled this year and filled much better than most people think. Smith. Shook one tackle, shook a couple, gets down to about the seven. Uh, he had William Thomas out there who's going to the Pro Bowl. Number 51, and Emmett Smith made a move on William Thomas and picked up about another five yards. Watch him, he's going to start out here to the left and watch the move that he makes on number 51. I mean, he has him right there, and he just runs right around and right through him. Then he gets by Govea. He made two of those Eagle linebackers miss on that play. Third. And three. Aikman rolls right through to Johnston. And the Moose. Can yell moves, moves. Now they'll get it. Good effort by Daryl Johnston. He would not have had the first. No, he didn't, and that's why Troy Aikman is coming up to him because he knows that he had to throw that one short. And Moose has to get. He doesn't have it here. He doesn't have it here, but he gets it right there. I mean, he even put his left hand down, and he ran all three points. You call that three points when you have two feet in the ground and one hand. He did some of it two-footed and some of it three-pointed. That's what a moose can do. Emmett Smith out to Darren Dustin. Eggman was a little late. Greg Jackson could have come up with that one and done some damage. And it would have done a heck of a lot of damage because if he would have come up with that one, he would have went all the way with it. But just the first thing on any play fake is you have to have a good fake. Now, now he didn't get the ball to Emmett Smith, and Emmett Smith didn't really make a good ball fake. And it didn't do anything. The guy he was trying yep. to throw it to, it didn't do anything at all to Greg Jackson. Second and goal at the two. Emmett Smith. for a loss and swarmed on by that Eagle defense led by Andy Harmon and he lost yards. Yeah, you know, Ray Rhodes, this is the type of thing that he talks about, you know, being physical with him, everyone swarming to the ball, gang tackling, all those kinds of things. That's what he wants. That's what that's what he teaches. That's what he's always taught as a 
as a defensive coach as a defensive coordinator and as a head coach. It's third and goal back at the six now. Barry Switzer saying I hate third down calls. They had it at the two. It was second and goal at the two. Now they have to pass. Aikman has time. Gets it down to Novacek at about the one yard line. Novacek is saying touchdown. Said he had his feet in the end zone, but his feet don't count. He did have his feet in there. It's where the ball is. The ball has to break the plane of the end zone. But if Jay Novacek argues, you know, he's usually pretty good. I mean, he's right down here. He gets hit right here. The ball is right there. He's not no, 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 he's not close. I mean, here's the ball. Jay, your feet don't count, so the ball should be spotted or right there. When you go down, it's where the ball is. I don't know what, and unless he was arguing that he was illegally bumped coming off the line of scrimmage. In any case, the Cowboys with Novacek holding and Boniol kicking the track field goal. Boniol gets it. He's two for two today and 27 in a row. And the Cowboys move ahead 20 to three. You know, Jay Novacek didn't get the touchdown, but watch him complain. He wasn't complaining that he had a touchdown. Look, at he, he grabs his own shirt there, and what he's doing is he's complaining about Bill Romanowski. He's saying, Romanowski held me on that plate. See how he grabbed himself there? That was what he was complaining about. And Romanowski did. This is Christy Jones. to return to kickoff. Gets out to about the 26. Charlie Williams. And here it is. Here's Jay Novacek. And watch Bill Romanowski, number 53, on him. Hits him in the face, grabs his jersey. He completely mauls him, they don't call it. Dallas leads 20 to 3 in the third. Ricky Waters gets the carry on the toss from Cunningham. Chased out of bounds by Larry Brown. You know, in the, in the Cowboy defense has done an excellent job of stopping the run, and then that makes this tough, too, see, because the quarterbacks have been sacked twice, hurried four times, knocked down five times, forced to scramble four times, and then, of course, this one here, Rodney Pete, has been knocked out of the game, and it's tougher to pass when you can't run because then the defense can tee off, and that's what this Cowboy defense is doing. Here's Cunningham back to throw, and he's hit. Tony Tolbert. That's what we were just talking about. You try and run on first down, you don't make anything. Now it becomes second and long, and now they just tee off. Yeah, Jim Eddy. Yeah, Jim Eddy is down there. He's a linebacker coach, but he's helping out on the sideline this week because of John Blake, who has gone to become the head coach of the University of Oklahoma. There's Tony Tolbert there. He's going to come underneath. You see, he starts up, then he feels a hole here, and he goes right into Randall Cunningham. But because they couldn't run, then they got in that long yardage situation, and now the Cowboys' defensive line could just tee off. Third and 16. And they didn't get the playoff in time, I don't believe. Now, they never recovered from that sack by Tony Tolbert. Maybe they took a timeout. I'm just not sure yet. See who was trying to calm him down? Ricky Waters yeah. was in the huddle saying, calm down, everyone take it easy. Just calm down. That was a penalty, though. They walked it off against him. Third and 21. Yep. Double H come out when that happens. And the crowd really starting to get into it now. This is something that the Cowboy players have been asking for all week long. Yeah, but they have to do something right. to earn it, and the Cowboy team is earning it today. Four wide receivers. Cunningham back to throw it. Pumps. Fires. Larry Brown, the defender. No flags this time. Brett Barnett, the intended receiver. This Cowboy defense is doing a good job now because, again, they've been able to stop the run. They've been able to stop Charlie Gardner. They've been able to stop Ricky Waters. And then they've been able to make the Eagle offense one-dimensional. Whereas this guy here can be exciting, too. He's, he's ready to excite this crowd now. He scored the first touchdown. Bad kick. Sanders. 
and watches it go out of bounds. It turned out to be better after that big high bounce than the Eagles could have hoped for. Sanders couldn't handle it, and it bounced out of bounds. Barry Wilburn shaken up on the play, but he seems to be okay. Thing into something. Rodney Pete went out with a concussion. Second and 19 as Aikman breaks him out. There at the Philadelphia 43. Larry Allen moved on that one. Yep. Yeah, once those, once those linemen get set, they put that hand out, they can't move at all. They can't even flinch. When you get like 330 pounds like Larry Allen, you just kind of move some of your stuff up above, they can jump off sides. That's a big flinch. Well, that was. I mean, you just move some stuff up above. Jerry Austin. Yeah, they, there wasn't only one official that saw Larry Allen move his stuff. There were two of them throwing at his stuff moving. Deion Sanders in the offensive scheme now for the Cowboys. He split wide left. I bet you he's been in over 10 plays on offense today. I know he has. Aikman. Michael Irvin had it. It was a good throw. It just got away. One thing that Ray Roach talked about is, is taking Michael Irvin out of the game. And, and for all intent and purposes, he's done that. Now, Bobby Taylor's been on him all day. But that doesn't mean that Bobby Taylor doesn't have help. You see, Bobby Taylor has deep help, so therefore he can play underneath him. Now, Michael Irvin just dropped that ball. That's that a ball, good throw. It was a good throw, and it had to be a good throw because Bobby Taylor was underneath him, and then they had the safety in behind him. So Troy Aikman had to get it to Irvin between Bobby Taylor and the safety behind, and he did it. Irvin yet to catch a pass today. Here's Aikman. Novacek. Novacek. You know, Pat, Eric Williams is getting to back to be Eric yep. Williams that I used to think was the, was, was the best offensive lineman in football because he can pick up stunts and then, and then give Aikman time to find guys downfield. Just watch him here, how, how you have to be able to start on a guy, he goes inside, push him up, and then come back and get the outside guy. See, those are the types of things that he couldn't do before right. that he's starting to do now again. This is Chris Bonio from 51 yards now with Novacek holding. That's going to get there. And it's good. And Dallas moves further in front. 23 to 3. Christy Jones. And any time at the end of the play that you look there, you're going to find Bates right around there. I mean, so just, just watch him. This is what he's always done best. I mean, just come on, you take on blockers, and then you, you don't let them knock you down or sideways or anything. You just keep going until you find that ball carrier. It takes special guys to run down on kickoffs and special guys to be the wedge buster that runs down right next to the kicker. Bill Bates has been doing it as well as anyone for 13 years. Well, if you want to, to pick out a special guy, you'd pick Bill Bates. Didn't Tom Landry once say that? Yep. Cunningham gets to Ricky Waters, and he gets very little. You know, 23 to 3, Pat, that's the way to get this crowd in yeah. the game. The, like you said, the players were talking about it during the week. Barry Switzer talked about, you know, let's get the crowd in the game, make noise and all that stuff. Get ahead and play like this, and that'll do it. But there's a guy who was having fun. When we talked to him yesterday, <laughs> he said, don't say I'm not having fun. Will you say, say do me a fun. favor and say I'm having fun? He doesn't look like he's having fun, now. Looks Sorry. like he has the whole weight of the world on his shoulder. Cunningham back to throw, incomplete. 
intended for Rob Carpenter slipped through his hand. I hey, Fat, here's Charles Haley right here. Now, an interesting thing, he had back surgery a few weeks ago. If the Cowboys win today, he's going to fly to Los Angeles tomorrow, have the doctor who did the surgery check him, and then he's going to try and play next week. If the Cowboys win, he wants to play in a championship game next week. Right now they lead 23 to 3 with a minute 55 left in the third quarter. Randall Cunningham back to throw. If he has time, Cunningham comes out of the pocket and scrambles for a first down. This is where he's always been tough. You know, the, the Cowboys are, are in their, their nickel defense. In fact, seven defensive backs. So they have all their defensive backs in there. And yeah, they all go and turn and go into coverage. So once Randall Cunningham gets by that rush group, he almost has an automatic first down. Of course, being down 20 points, you can't do that all day either. Hennings and Maryland are inside. Tolbert and Shante Carver outside the defensive front four. First and 10, Philadelphia. Cunningham gets it up the middle. Fred Barnett makes the catch for about a gain of nine. See, because the Eagles haven't been able to run, now, now the Cowboys are just playing every down like it's a passing down. I mean, they're still playing their, their six and seven defensive backs on first down. Second and one. Two tight ends for the Eagles. Cunningham back to throw it. And complete to Calvin Williams. And that'll be enough for an Eagle first down at the Cowboy 36. You know, and that's one thing that the Eagles, just before halftime, remember when Randall Cunningham came in there, they looked like they were going to be able to do this. I thought they would get to this earlier than they did in this second half because they can, if they can get the pass protection and the Two guys they've had trouble with have been Leon Lett and uh, Tony Tolbert. If they can get them handled, uh, they can do some damage throwing the ball. First down. Cunningham has a blitz come after him. Dixon Edwards. Godfrey Miles, I beg your pardon. Godfrey Miles came on a blitz. And, and, that, and, and that's that zone blitz again. You're going to see Chad Hennings here. He's going to drop out. Chad Hennings is right there in the middle. You see him drop out? That's a zone blitz where they where they drop the defensive line and bring the linebacker. Drop Hennings, bring Godfrey Miles. That's the end of the third quarter. The Cowboys up 23 to 3 where the Cowboys lead the Eagles 23 to 3 if the Cowboys hang on and win they'll entertain the Packers next week if Philadelphia comes back the championship game will be in Green Bay second 17 Cunningham chased out of the pocket fire is complete and I mean fires he really cut loose I didn't know that he didn't hit Ricky Waters I in think the head. He did. I yeah. think he did. Yeah, because he he started to scramble, and as he was scrambling, he got outside of Tony Tolbert, and then and then he's telling Waters to go deep, and he did. He just he just zapped him right in the back of the uh, the old noggin. Ricky yeah. Waters was going deep. He wasn't open. It wouldn't have made any difference no. oh. unless he would have put his hands where his head was. Third and seventeen. corner pass is intended for Calvin Williams and is knocked down. Here comes the Eagle putting unit. I thought they might go for a first, but it's too far. Fourth and 17, that's too much. Well, at, at, at some point, they have to consider going for it because because they, you know, they need 20 points, so they're going to, they're, they're thinking in terms of three scores. Deion Sanders signals fair catch and makes it at about the nine, maybe the ten. Twenty-three to three, the Cowboys take over.
by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. And by Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Fourteen forty-two left to play. Dallas leading Philadelphia 23-3. At the end of this game, John and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game. Oh, yeah. the ball, the pitch is back. To Emmett Smith. Beg your pardon, that's Sherman Williams. Look at this, what they have now. About this electronic imaging where they take the picture and then they can say print of any picture they want. So they just pull it out. They have a sideline picture and an end zone picture. See, the thing is, the guy has two buttons. And any time he wants that picture that comes off that screen printed, he pushes print. And then that picture is printed, then that becomes a still shot. Then they can use it on the sideline. Aikman. To Daryl Johnston, not enough for a first. That's the Eagles sideline. You see, they have the same thing on the Eagles sideline, only in a traveling case. But they got the print, and then and then as they bring out the play, they write down what the situation was. And then the coach takes it, then he goes over and he shows his defensive players what they were doing offensively and what their adjustment should be defensively. Third and short. That's a little bit more sophisticated, I would imagine, than what you had. Well, yeah, we used to have a guy up in the booth, uh, you know, with the uh, coaches, and he would just take a Polaroid shot and then just give him the Polaroid there. Right. That's what we had, except they threw it out of the upper deck in an old dirty sock. Down I remember guy. that. They yeah. threw it in a rock or something. Yeah. Put a rock in a sock and throw it out of the stadium That's down right. to the sideline. That's exactly what happened. 23 to 3. Jimmy plus Bucks playoff. I assume that means Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, that means Jimmy Johnson going from Fox to the Bucks, and then they go to playoffs, and then in the bottom right-hand corner it said Honduras. Guys from Honduras that wants to do that. Here's Aikman. Drops it out to Emmett Smith. And Emmett will get the first. Uh, get out of bounds. Stop the clock. At about the 20. 26 yard line. Yeah, you know, we talked earlier uh, before the game about you know playoffs and the finality and a, a three game season and and you know that kind of gives you the emotion in the first half and then in the fourth quarter it starts to set in. You know that you're getting winners and losers. Winners knowing they're going on, losers knowing that this can be it. It's slipping away. Their season is going to be over. Winners knowing that next week they're in a championship game. If they win that, they're in a Super Bowl. Deion Sanders, uh, one of the wide receiver spots, they give the ball to Emmett Smith. Deion got a block. Emmett got almost to the 35. Mark McMillan made the stop. Well, when Jerry Jones signed Deion Sanders, he signed him for now. And I think, you know, the value of that is going to be to be determined and it's starting to be determined today because he didn't bring him in here just to play the regular season he brought him in here to win a playoff game to win a championship game and to win a Super Bowl game and Dion is earning his money today today I know everyone's good oh no I'm good here and they pay him way too much but he's earning it today he split wide right this time Darrell Johnston moves Emmett gets the handoff and has to just tuck it under that's Sherman Williams who's replaced Emmett Smith. Well, one thing that they found out in the first game that, that any time they put Deion Sanders in, it was easier to run because they were conscious of Deion out there. And then in the second half, they didn't put Deion in, and then the running got tougher for Emmett Smith. So now they're remembering that in the second half, they're just putting Deion in. Now in that play, he just raised his hand to go out. And Emmett Smith comes back in in place of Williams, and he'll be the deep back with along with three wide receivers and Aikman back to throw it pass is almost picked off by McMillan Novacek was the intended receiver that was well covered by the Eagles John Jett will come on I mean, they, you know we were talking about the matchup between William Fuller and Eric Williams and one thing about Eric Williams you know you always have to finish off your blocking and that's what he's been doing here. And you're going to see him right here 
and here's Fuller here. Now just watch, those guys have been going after each other all day. Now, they go after each other even after the play is over. See, Williams is not only a guy that will block you, but he'll also throw a punches. I mean, he threw a left and a right at Fuller. Jeff to punt it. Good kick. Chases Carpenter back to about the 19. And he's down at about the 26. With 11-16 left to play, it's Dallas 23, Philadelphia 3. If you look at big Eric Williams, he's getting closer and closer to being back to 100%. Yeah, I think, I think if you would tell me you could start a team and take three guys from the Cowboys, he would be one of my take. Here's Cunningham back to throw and throwing deep. Incomplete. It was intended for Carpenter. And now again, let's go back to Hollywood. James Brown and the McDonald's game break. Hey, Pat, I know you know this. NFC Championship game two years ago. Jimmy Johnson guaranteeing a Cowboys victory. MVP Emmitt Smith led the way. Jimmy was proven right. Cowboys win easily and go on to defeat Buffalo for their fourth Super Bowl title. Take it back to Pat and John. We remember that one well, JB. Eagles at their own 28. Cunningham back to throw. Gets rid of it. Pass is complete to Ricky after Christy Jones. You know, the, the thing Leon led is still just really just teeing off on Guy McIntyre and raising havoc back there with, with Randall Cunningham. And a lot of the reason is it goes back that the Eagles haven't been able to run today. And now the score, you know, 23 to 3, it's too late. But they stopped, the Cowboy defense stopped the run first. I mean, look at Thunder and Lightning. I mean, 10 times 31 yards, 5 times 13 yards, that's nothing. And that's good Cowboy defense. That's no thunder or lightning. Flag on the play as Cunningham bounces one down to Larry Brown. Fred Barnett, the intended receiver. Yeah, and then what happened, and then and then because of that, then the Eagles, if they were going to do anything, they had to pass the ball, and then the Cowboys went into their nickel defense and started rushing the pass for every play. It's been tough. Number 96 of the defense, five yards, repeat first down. Shante Carver is number 96. He is saying he was pulled off offsides by one of the Eagle offensive linemen. It will be interesting. Shante Carver is playing Charles Haley's position out there, and this Dallas defense is playing pretty well today, but they aren't 75% of what they can be when they have Charles Haley. First and five. Cunningham back. Incomplete. Rob Carpenter, intended receiver, covered by Darren Smith. You know, there's a guy that's played a good game yeah. today is Darren Smith. I mean, you know, all that short stuff that the Eagles have been trying to hit, whether it be to a tight end or a running back, it seems like Darren Smith has always been right there with him. He, of course, is very fast. Missed a lot of the early part of the season. Held out. Finally came back. He'll be one of the three, four linebackers that are all free agents for the Cowboys. Jerry Jones is just thinking about let's do this year first then we'll get to that one pass incomplete Cunningham behind Barnett and he did throw it on Deion Sanders you know they, there's not a lot of patterns that you can throw on Deion Sanders most people think they can throw slants and crosses but here's here they are here here's Deion Sanders here and outs are tough to throw against him because he he will jump and out that time he didn't jump that one at all. I, I think Dion's a little tired. You know, he's played he's played offense, he's played defense, he's played special teams, and he's not jumping on coverage the way he was when he's fresh. It's third and five. Cunningham chased out of the pocket by Lett. Lobs it down to Barnett. Barnett tried it one-handed. And it's incomplete. That was a pretty good play there by Deion Sanders because he he knocked Barnett down, but he was covering Calvin Williams. He wasn't on Fred Barnett. He was on Calvin Williams, and he comes off of Calvin Williams. See him here? He was out there covering the outside guy, and he seized the ball in the air and jumped on that one because no one was covering Fred Barnett. Fine kick 
Sanders lets it go over his head and it goes into the end zone and out. And the Cowboys will start from their own 20 with 10 26 left to play. As a 56 yard punt by Hutton. 23 to 3. The Cowboys moving closer. Is the running back in place of Emmett Smith. Aikman will throw. Kevin Williams. Covered by McMillan, but complete as Kevin Williams has done an excellent job. Yeah, and Ray Rhodes thought that Mark McMillan would, would be able to match up with Kevin Williams, but he hasn't today. No. I mean, really, Kevin Williams has gotten the best of that matchup. And how about this matchup here? You know, we talked about before the game where Emmett Smith said that, that the Cowboys go as these front guys go. Well, if that's true, they rush for 125 yards. They've only allowed one sack. And to me, that is the group that makes the Cowboys go and made them go today. Williams to the 45. Is Nate blocked his guy down 10 yards, Pat? I've never seen that before. I mean, he had his guy, he took his guy and drove him 10 yards deep. I mean, he's going to block against Kevin Johnson. Watch, here's Big Nate. That has to be Big Nate. Now watch, here's Big Nate right here. Now he has his guy, and he takes him back. There's five, there's six, there's seven. Watch him. He's still got him, and he takes him. If he gets him to that line, that's 12. Nate Newton blocked his guy 12 yards deep. Now you're talking. That's some blocking. Here comes an eagle blitz. That's Sherman Williams. Sherman Williams. Just short. Just brought to my attention that because of the weather on the East Coast, even if the Eagles lose and they're headed in that direction, they can't get out of Dallas because the weather is so bad on the East Coast. A lot of snow in the East. Yeah, and that's, I mean, the job that, that the Eagles have done and Ray Rhodes has done and this, and this whole team has done it. You know, even if they do lose, they're still proud of, you know, of the getting to this thing. Oh, now, I know yeah. Ray Rhodes would never say that. He would never said we just want to get to the playoffs or win a playoff game. It's always right, been a Super snap. Bowl. Ball start. Number 73 of the offense. 10 yards. It's still third down. Call against Larry Allen. But you have to respect the job that Ray Rhodes did. Oh, Jeffrey sure. Lurie, you know, hired Ray Rhodes. He was like his fifth choice. He came in here and Brought a bunch of players in that had championships, Super Bowl experience. Surrounded himself with a bunch of good young coaches. Coach like heck, Guy McIntyre said, I've never hit so much in my life in practice. And Ray Rhodes never takes the pads off. He did it his way. And he has this team pointed in the right direction. Aikman to throw. Deion Sanders just out of his reach. He was open. He was open, yeah, well open. Uh, yeah, Bobby Taylor was on him that time. They were trying to zone him. Oh, hey, they're still going there. There was a overhand, an the overhand head. left, and the and the uh, Brogans to the uh, to the uh, other area. This started, uh, you recall, we were talking about it earlier. It started a couple of years ago in a match between Eric Williams and Fuller. Here's the last play. Here's Eric Williams right here. Here's Fuller right here. They're still out there talking. But again, Eric Williams is one guy who's going to finish off his blocks, and he'll do anything to get a block. He grabbed Fuller by the face mask, threw him down. Now watch, watch Fuller this. here. Eric Williams takes a punch. Fuller takes a kick. Oof. We have two fouls on the play. Illegal use of hands to the face. Number 79 of the offense. That penalty is declined. We have personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 79 of the offense. That penalty will be enforced. 15 yards. Fourth down. Well, he said yesterday that when I put on the helmet, 
I become a different person. But this is an old story. You know, we yeah, talked about back. William Fuller, and it goes back where Fuller was taken out of a game because Eric Williams had beaten him so bad. Ray Rhodes even told the story when he first came here because Fuller's a leader. He wouldn't show the team. They wouldn't show the team that film because he didn't want to see his team leader getting beaten the way Eric Williams was beating Fuller. John Jett back to punt. Rob Carpenter deep. Jett's kick is a good one. Carpenter signals fair catch. Makes it at about the 21 yard line. 22 perhaps. Well, I'll tell you, you can, yard punt, excuse me. Uh, I was just saying, you can tell that Eric Williams is back, though. I mean, he he came back from that car uh, accident, and he said he came back too early, and he he, he played the, the whole year and kind of struggled through it and wasn't the old Eric Williams that, to me, was the best offensive lineman in all of football, but the way he's playing today, he's starting to look like the old Eric Williams. First and 10 Eagles at their own 21. Yeah, you, know, you have to love that about offensive tackle like Eric Williams to pour ice water on his head on a day like this, huh? Ricky Waters over the left side. You have to wonder about it. He must have really been hot. No, well, you wonder about it. I mean, you like that. Yeah. That, you know, if, because if you're, if you're an offensive lineman, uh, that has to make sense to you. If that doesn't make sense to you, when, uh, when the sweat's coming out the top of your head, and you throw ice water on it, then you're probably like a wide receiver. But see, Nate looks at it, he's looking at it, and he says, yeah, that's a good move, Big E. 7.25 left to play. Cunningham has the pass broken up. Uh, intended for Reggie Johnson. Yeah, Scott, Scott Case, Case. Scott Case broke it up. He's in there as a safety because they've been playing almost this whole second half in just a, a nickel defense or six or seven defensive backs. And Scott Case is that extra defensive back that comes in and plays as a safety. Third and six. They're two out of 11 on third down. Three wide receivers for the Eagles. Cunningham back to throw it. He was out of bounds. <laughs> he tried to lateral it after he was out of bounds. But the Cowboys do get the ball. Something's broken out over there. One thing about Dion, when he does get the ball, you know, whether you like him or you kind of like him or you don't like him, he does cause excitement. He does do that. Here's the interception. Even if he's inbounds or out of bounds, he's covering Calvin Williams here. Gets a good jump. That's that out that I was talking about that he'll jump, and he jumped it then, made the move, goes out of bounds, and says, now maybe I'll lateral it. <laughs> and Ricky Waters, his old teammate that slung him to the ground. Yeah, but watch him get the jump on this out. I mean, he, he, was, he was ready to jump right in front of it. Now he got that high step, and the Waters... Knocks him out of bounds, and he's trying to make a rugby play. This is Sherman Williams around the corner. Down to the 11. Greg Jackson made the stop. You know, the thing is, is they don't, they don't throw up, they don't throw the ball at Dion a lot. You see, they've only thrown to him three times, but when they, when they do throw at him, it can be coming back at you quickly. As it just did. Sherman Williams got the first down. It's Cowboy first down at the Eagle 11. So Dion had that, that uh, interception there, and then, of course, he also had that reverse for a touchdown. Williams again inside the 10. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Second down, Cowboys. Hey, Williams is still fired up, and that time, it, you know, if, if not with Fuller now, it was with Andy Harmon that last play. In fact, I don't even think Fuller's in the game anymore. No, he's not. Eric Williams will take whoever they leave in there. Touchdown, Michael 
Marvin. That's his first catch of the day, too. Yep. Nine yards. Eight them to Irvin. Take them away most of the day. Can't take them away all day. See, that was that same move that Bobby Taylor had been given earlier. He gave that inside punch, then did a spin move, and then tried to come back on it. Bonio for the extra point. Cowboys move ever closer to entertaining the Packers next week at Texas Stadium. The excitement as the playoff race concludes with the final showdown on the road to the Super Bowl. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. If it's here. It's going to be Dallas and Green Bay. And that's what it looks like. Saxon. Turns the kickoff out to about the 35. Michael Irvin, his first catch, a touchdown catch, his only catch. The Dallas defense has done a job today. Well, of course, here's the big one, only allowing three points. But they sacked the quarterback four times, forced eight punts, allowed nine first downs, only 162 yards total offense. That's not bad. Nope. That'll, that'll, win, that'll win you most games. And they did it without Charles Haley, and there is a possibility that they will have Charles Haley next week. A handoff is to Ricky Waters, who slips down behind the line of scrimmage. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stenner and directed by Sandy Grossman, the associate director's Rich Russo. The broadcast associates Mike Roig and Fran Morrison. Stage managers Rich Nelson. Studio was produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. Second and 11. Now the Green Bay Packers are probably watching this, and right now they figure, well, we can go start working on Dallas. Cunningham down by Hennings. There's another guy that's played pretty well today, Chad Hennings. He was a guy that's been rushing the passers, been dropping out on those zone blitzes. He was a guy that Mo Elowanibi was blocking when he tore his patella tendon just earlier him. in the game. Buckled him. I'll tell you, the guy who, who really dominated when the score was 0-0 and early in the game and has been all game is Leon Lett. Without a doubt. Flag on the play. Cunningham throws a screen to Waters. Ricky Waters gets out near a first down, but the flag was thrown back way back early in the play. I think that's against Shante Carver. I think the yep. Dallas Cowboy defense jumped. So that was really a free play if that were true. Four fifteen left to play. Dallas 30, Philadelphia 3. Number 96 in the defense, Hilly is the climb. Yeah, it was Shante Carver. You see him right up there. He's going to jump, and he's going to get in the neutral zone, the neutral zone being the length of the football. He couldn't get it all back. Uh, and then and then that gives Randall Cunningham a free play. If he sees that or knows that, you just go back and just throw anything. Fourth and two. Cunningham took advantage of it. Fourth and two. Waters and Saxon behind Cunningham. Cunningham's going to throw. Pulls it back. Gets it out to Waters. Ricky Warner slipped down at the 40. He juked Brock Marion, got by him, and then slid down. 19-yard gain. An eagle first down. Clock running at less than four minutes now. Leon let the big cat under that hood. Yep, he sure is, and he he was a dominating player today. When Charles Haley was there, Charles Haley is a dominating pass rusher, and when Charles Haley isn't there, someone has to pick that up, and Leon Lett picked it up. Here, here's Cunningham, who fires complete. The count Williams 
gets out of bounds and stops the clock with 327 left to play. Michael Irvin and Larry Allen. I'm going over there because those guys know. I mean, Michael Irvin is a is a wide receiver. Emmett Smith is a running back. Troy Aikman, a quarterback. They're all important, but they all go over to that offensive line because if it's not for those guys, these 30 points don't go up there. And they have done the job. How about what Troy Aikman gave the offensive line for uh, for Christmas? They had a big Christmas. Here's Ricky Waters down to about the 20. You know what he gave him? He gave him a wooden box with pens in it. He gave him all wooden rocking chairs. He gave him a suit. He gave him airline tickets to anywhere they wanted to go. And he gave him dinner, and he said he gave him stuff for the kids. Now that's, that's, that's a big package. Well, Nate Newton said to Troy, ask him to be on the show, you know, with you and yeah. Troy Aikman. And uh, you ask him, did you get paid? And Nate said, hey, when Troy calls, I come running. <laughs> Here's Cunningham firing and too high. In the end zone for Fred Barnett. <laughs> The only thing I think I'd come running too if I got yeah, all that for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, and then the rocking chair. I don't know what those big linemen. I mean, those better be big old heavy duty, duty rocking chairs. And you know, Nate, Nate says that when he gets his rocking chair, he's going to put it on a porch when he gets through playing, and he's just going to sit in that rocking chair. And for the first six months after he retires, he's just going to rock. He's not even going to rock it. <laughs> no, he's not even going to rock it. He's just going to do nothing. Not even rock the rocking chair. Job he's done today. He doesn't need to think about retiring. You see Nate block a guy 12 yards downfield today. Cunningham got the pass complete to Carpenter out of bounds. It'll be first and goal for the Eagles. That's when you can throw on Deion Sanders late in the game. They call this that fade. You know, whether he's just gonna go up the field and just throw it right there, and you can throw it short with a fade stop, or if you can get over the top, then it's just a regular fade. I think that's that fade stop. That's what they're trying to do, where you try and run that fade, and then you stop, you throw it at any point during the fade move. First and goal. Waters in motion. Cunningham's going to run the quarterback draw, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Randall Cunningham. Four yards out. Cunningham gets in. Now, now he's going to go for two. Everyone's saying, geez, they make it look so easy at this point. But again, you know, you're taking score and you're taking time. And that's what the Cowboys are doing is, is they're playing a form of a prevent defense. They got a lot of backup players in there. The adrenaline's not flowing like it was earlier. And then the Eagles just march down the field and get one. Cunningham has Waters behind him, takes to Waters, throws. For the two-point conversion to Reggie Johnson. So the Cowboy lead is now 30 to 11 with 236 left to play. And we'll probably have an onside kick now. Once you get a touchdown and go for two, the next thing we'll be looking for is an onside kick before this post-game report. That's coming up. With all the guys back in the studio after the game, Jimmy, Terry, Howie, JB. And the Packers will be traveling south. Uh, you know, and the, and the Packers haven't matched up well with the Cowboys. They've had trouble matching up well, and I'll tell you what they've had trouble with. They've had trouble with that inside and stopping that inside run. But the Packers are a better team now than the Packer team that lost to the Cowboys earlier this year and in the playoffs last year. But they this is the guy that they could never stop. Right. And he's had a little rest with Sherman Williams playing. Remember that last time they played here and we had that shot and Reggie White was talking to his teammates and he said, yeah. every time we come here, every time we play these guys, this happens to us. Reggie said, we come down here and we get our butt kicked and you guys don't seem to care. Well, I think the Green Bay Packers care now. I think you're indeed right about that. Here's the old onside kick. Crooked ball and everything. Anderson has it. Fielded by Jay Novacek. The hands team. 
and the Cowboys will take over. Chad Henning. This is an amazing guy. I mean, it, I mean, I just can't believe this. The guy has a bad ankle. He has a bad knee. They get a, a, a game. He misses a game. He has surgery. And he's back. And as you said, we went there the other day, and it was cold, and all the guys have all their clothes and stuff on, and he's running around in shorts. And, and running well. And plays a game uh, two weeks after surgery. That's, that's the 90s. Or maybe that's guys from the 70s playing in the 90s. Maybe. David Wang's a fullback. Sherman Williams a tailback. Sherman gets down for about nine yards. And, uh, this was a good onside kick by Anderson. Watch. It's going to go one, two, three. Now skip up high. Boom. There it did. That was a perfect kick. Jay Novacek made a heck of a play. He really did. But that's what you guys try and do. I mean, you, you put that ball sideways, yeah. right? And then you right. try and get it short, 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 jump. You Wade, know? excuse me, Wade Wilson's now the quarterback. Yeah, that's what you try to do. Jay Novacek rides cutting horses. One yeah. time I, says, I said, I didn't know what the heck I was talking about, and I said, he cuts horses. I remember you said that. Yeah, and then... We got a lot of mail. Yeah, well, then he came up and told me. He said, let me explain to you. He said... <laughs> He said, I ride cutting horses, horses that cut, I think they cut cattle. That's, that's, right, they do. that's right. And he was explaining to me, and I'm nodding like I know, and he rides cutting horses. Then they have, you know, special saddles for, for cutting horses. Uh, it used to be when they had cattle on the range and what have you, they'd cut them out and put the brand on them. That's where the name came from. They cut out the cows, put my brand on them, your brand, whatever. And that's what Jay does now, huh? while he plays tight end to the Cowboys when he's not cutting. Well, you know, the other guy that does that is uh, Bum Phillips. Bum Phillips was a big uh, cutting horse guy. He has a bigger horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a bigger saddle. But you know, the Cowboys, you know, from, from Thanksgiving on, to be honest, they didn't look like the Cowboys. No. They didn't, you knew they were one of the best teams, but they didn't play like it. Today, they played like it again. What it looked like as Wade Wilson gives to Sherman Williams. It looked as if other teams, the opponents, had figured out what they were doing and took away the Michael Irvins. Took away Emmett Smith, got hurt on Thanksgiving Day. Eagle timeout here. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did, and they did that today. I mean, they took Michael Irvin away today. He only caught that one pass right there at the end of the game, but... Ernie Zampezi did a good job of play calling because that's what Ray Rhodes was talking about last night. He said, what you try and do is you try and get the rhythm of the coordinator. And he said that we've played against Ernie Zampezi for years. Right. Dallas and Los Angeles. And he said he does have a certain rhythm. And you try and get your defense to know his rhythm and to get into that rhythm. But today they weren't able to do it. I think that Ernie and his rhythm beat the Eagles rhythm in championship games by the way one of the things they said was that Kevin Williams had to stand uh, step up and take some of the load off Michael Irvin and he did he caught six passes for 124 yards the championship game notes we started to say a minute ago the Packers lead in championship games including that ice bowl game Packers are up to nothing that ice bowl game that was in 1967 right, right? And yes then, and then that was when we played uh, the Packers in Super Bowl II. That's right. This is Sherman Williams. He dodged about 10 people. Stopped finally by McMillan. Barry Switzer was saying, and you know, he deserves some congratulations too. Barry Switzer to get the Cowboys this far. Regular season record of 12 and four. He's come under a lot of fire, a lot of criticism, but he's still done a commendable job. Leon Lett. We have picked John Madden and I as our Miller Lite player of the game. When when the score was close, the Eagles just couldn't get him blocked. Now, and if, if the Eagles were going to win today, they had to be able to run the ball. And they had to be able to run the ball for about 140 yards. And if they were going to do that, they had to get Leon Lett blocked. He didn't let them run early and then stopped that, then he started the pass rush and really dominated the game when the game was up for grabs. Now it's fourth and short. 
Look at Larry Allen there. He's signal first he's down. He's first down. Well, you get your old guard. He's been in there fighting all day. And he just goes and gives the signal first down. Gary Switzer doesn't look like he's too excited about this because I think this is the thing about the Dallas Cowboys. I think you know, everyone says, is Troy Aikman happy? Is it, it, There's so much expected of them that winning this game is nothing. You know, they, they, they had to get to this game. They have to win this game. Winning next game is that they have to win the next game and they have to get to the only thing that is acceptable here in Dallas is winning the Super Bowl. Wade Wilson goes into the kneel and the clock continues to run with a minute and five seconds left. And now Troy Aikman can have some fun because he can see the end. He can see the light at the end of the tunnel because as we said today earlier, it's a two-game season. Now for the Dallas Cowboys, I mean a three-game season. Now for the Dallas Cowboys, it's a two-game season. If you just win two more games, you are the Super Bowl champions. You're the champions of the world. When you get that close, you've got to get it done. But the Green Bay Packers are thinking the same thing. And again, Wade Wilson kneels. That should do it. 30 to 11. Third time these two teams have played. The Cowboys won two, and the Eagles won one. Bring on the cheeseheads. Well, they might be wishing for a little more than what Green Bay has been in the past when they came to Texas Stadium. They're a better team now. The Cheeseheads, we saw them two weeks ago. We watched them on television yesterday. And I think the Cheeseheads are ready to come to Dallas. So for John Madden and Pam Oliver, I'm Pat Summerall saying so long from Texas Stadium where the final score was Dallas 30, Philadelphia 11. Be sure to stay tuned for the postgame report. James Brown, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Jimmy Johnson. We'll be along from our Hollywood studio. You've been watching Fox Sports coverage of the National Football League. The post game show along with Jimmy Johnson, Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw. I'm James Brown. Of course, uh, Philadelphia losing to the Dallas Cowboys today, 30 to 11. One of the reasons for the Eagles struggle on the ground and in the air. Pam Oliver standing by with a big one, Leon Lett. All right, Leon, Pat and John voted your most valuable player for this game. Tell me just about the defensive stand today. Uh, we felt like we had to come out and stop the run, uh, first of all. And uh, we knew we could get at them doing pass rush, passing situation. But uh, basically, we just wanted to stop the run first. When Rodney Pete goes out of the game, did that give you guys special motivation, especially since Randall Cunningham hadn't practiced but uh, one day all week? Yeah, but actually, we was kind of scared at first because, you know, Randall, he's a good scrambler. And uh, that's what he did when he came in. We knew he was kind of rusty throwing the ball, but he scrambled a little bit. But we kind of contained him and got him shut down. You know how vocal Charles Haley is. Did he help you out throughout the game? Uh, he helped me out the whole game. As a matter of fact, he helped the whole defense out, uh, you know, getting us little pointers, letting us know what we was doing wrong and everything. So, yeah. You thinking Charles might be able to go next week? Uh, I'm looking forward to him being back next week. Oh, yeah. What about the Packers? They did a, a great job against the 49ers just uh, yeah, that's going to be a big challenge for us. We're looking forward to getting some good work in this week. And we'll be ready for them. All right. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank Thanks. you, Leon. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Pam, thank you very much. Only 74 yards on the ground rushing by the Philadelphia Eagles. Jimmy Johnson smiling at his uh, young player who's come a long way, as he said, from his rookie year. Terry, as a matter of fact, why don't we uh, get right to the highlights and show the fans exactly what took place in this game. Dallas winning at 30-11. to Ray Rhodes matched up against Barry Switzer. Good job, Rodney Peter off the bat, nice drive moving, gets out of the pocket, scrambles down, hit hard here on the sideline by Darren Woodson as he lunges for the first down, doesn't make the first down, has to leave the game with a concussion. Deion Sanders, we knew he'd make an impact today, we didn't know it would be on reverses, goes to the left, reverses field, back to the right, touchdown for Deion, Dallas up 10-3. to three. Play action, there it is. Moose, where you at? Down the middle, here I am, dive to the one foot line, and it goes over after this. Cowboys are up 17 to three and lead that at the half. Michael Irvin's only score of the day on this touchdown pass from Troy Aikman with another big game as the Cowboys, JB, go on today, took it up another notch, 30 to 11 over the Eagles will now face 
the Green Bay Packers. And as you see the note there, move on to the NFC Championship game for the fourth time, 14th time, that is, in franchise history. As we come back inside, let's start back with Coach Johnson. You mentioned that it was important that the Eagles DBs do a job against Kevin Williams. Didn't happen today. Well, Mark McMillan, one-on-one -on -one coverage against Kevin Williams. We said, well, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Kevin Williams wins this one hands down. Six catches for 124 yards. Michael Irvin only had one catch for the touchdown. So the Cowboys showed that if you double cover Michael Irvin, we'll go to Kevin Williams. We'll make yardage. The other thing, too, the whole you know, the story of this game is that offensive line and the defensive line led by Leon Lett. They control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we talked about that in the pre-game pre show, and, and I think the game is won up front, especially this time of the year. As what was evident yesterday, the lack of a running game cost the San Francisco 49ers. They became one-dimensional. Dallas doesn't have that problem. Dallas is the most talented team in football right now. If they show up to play, which they did today, they will win another world championship. Yeah, I'll go back to Williams. You're very true. Troy Aikman threw the ball to Kevin Williams against the Giants and the Cardinals. You know, we thought, well, that's okay. Those, these aren't great defensive football teams. Today was a big challenge, and Troy got it to Williams again. Michael Irvin taken out of the game, but the fact that Kevin Williams is legitimate, someone you have to think and worry about now, really does give the Green Bay Packers a serious Let's threat. Let's not forget number 21. Now, does Kevin yeah. Williams now have Troy Aikman's oh, confidence? Oh, absolutely. If I'm quarterback Aikman, I'm thinking, thank God now, I have two receivers, a great tight end, a great fullback, and one of the best running backs in the history of the NFL. All right, we've got a nice matchup coming up next week. Uh, America's team from two different eras, the Green Bay Packers, will be taking on the Dallas Cowboys, and we'll preview that matchup coming up. Of course, you'll see it next week right here on Fox. We'll talk about it in a second. That matchup. The Packers and Cowboys conjure up images of one thing, the Ice Bowl, vintage 67, and a Green Bay comeback victory. But that was long ago and very far away. Now the pack is back, and Brett's been the man all year. Topping the league in yards and touchdowns thrown, Brett's touchdown total was the most ever by an NFC QB. All this while bringing Green Bay its first conference title since 72. Mr. Brooks has been golden in Sterling's absence, and although he may need a vowel, don't forget Chamura. Heading the defense are Sean Jones and Reggie White, two of the league's toughest linemen. The battle is set in Irving, where the boys have won five straight from the pack, including the past two divisional playoff games. Dallas has talent, motivation, and the home field. As far as talent is concerned, two words. Emmett Smith. He led the league in rushing for the fourth time in five years while setting the NFL record with 25 TDs. But this team is not a lone star unit. Troy rules the range and was the NFC's second rated passer. And with Michael looking to beat you long, you can't forget speedy Kevin or the reliable Mr. Novacek. And after last year's fall, this group of Cowboys is looking to ride high once again. They took care of the Eagles. Now they want to stop the pack for their third conference championship in the last four years. All right, that's the NFC title match next week. Jimmy, of course the Packers come in with a red-hot quarterback, Brett Favre. 21 TDs, only two picks in the last nine games, but you can't get past six straight losses, five under Holmgren in Texas Stadium. How do you overcome that? Well, JV, just like what Brett Favre said on our halftime show, that, you know, they went into San Francisco loose. They felt like they didn't have anything to lose, and they went out there and played that way. Brett Favre was red hot, you know, had a great ball game. The problem with the Packers against the Cowboys the last few years is, you know, they haven't been able to match up in a couple of areas. They haven't been able to slow down Emmitt Smith running the football, and then on top of that, they haven't had a strong running game. Edgar Bennett's going to have to really run the football if they're going to match up against the Cowboys. The other thing, they've got more confidence now than they've ever had. Yeah, Timmerman, their, their replacement for uh, the kid from Notre Dame at guard is a big matchup on Leon Lett. Eric Williams looks like he's back. Giving up the big play has been a big problem versus Dallas. They need to keep a safety in center field. They need to run the ball or find ways to supplement the run with screens. That's right. right. <laughs> Boy, I talk Great. about that. The, right. the big key, Charles Haley could be back next yeah, week. Charles too. is back make that consulting defense even his position this yeah. week. We like it when Terry is succinct, no <laughs> doubt about it. All right, well, some guys I know who definitely have some thoughts on that matchup coming up next week on Fox are the guys who called today's game, Pat Summerall and John Madden.
<laughs> All right, JP. This is, I guess, uh, John, what, our 11th Cowboy game that we did today. Yeah. So, indeed, we have seen a lot of them. The Cowboys won kind of handily, 30 to 11, but I, I got a feeling that they were not at all too happy with the way they won today. They didn't look that sharp. Well, they, they, they've looked sharper than they had, though, since Thanksgiving. I mean, yeah. I think that, that Thanksgiving, uh, Emmett Smith got hurt. Uh, they lost Ray Donaldson. I didn't think their running game was as good. Uh, I didn't know that Eric Williams was really back today. Like they were just talking about in the studio, I think Eric Williams is coming back. Yeah. I think that Nate Newton looks like he's blocking. Kennard is getting more comfortable in there. Uh, I think Emmett Smith, again, is okay, so they're starting to run. And I think the Cowboys are closer to being the Cowboys that we know than they have been for a month. I thought that the defense, uh, the Cowboy defense today, looked like they did at the beginning of the year. Leon Lett played very well. I think they've become accustomed to Deion Sanders being in the secondary. Well, yeah, and, and the thing that they did is, is they had to stop the run. And they, they, they stopped the run, and then they could make the Eagles one-dimensional and then just go after the pass. Now, I think that's going to be a problem next week, though, with the Green Bay Packers because I can think against the Packers, you can stop the run yep. and then say, okay, Brett Favre beat us, and Brett Favre can beat you. And I think today when they stopped the run and say, okay, Rodney Peter, Randall Cunningham beat us, Randall Cunningham, Rodney Pete couldn't beat you, but Brett Favre can beat him. And Reggie White has said to the Packer team this year, this is Brett Favre's team. He's going to take us as far as we're going to go. Back to you guys. All right, Pat, thank you very much. And there is one other playoff game on the slate today. The Indianapolis Colts have a formidable task, although they won their first playoff game since 1971, beating San Diego last week. They're playing the Kansas City Chiefs, who are undefeated at home. And for a preview look at that matchup, as he takes it in, 21 yards for number 21, helping the Cowboys to that 30 to 11 victory over the Eagles and advancing to the NFC Championship game for the 14th time in franchise history. Jimmy, this ought to be a pretty exciting championship matchup, not only because of those squads, but because you're heading back down to Texas Stadium oh as well. Boy. But again, oh, your old boy is oh indeed boy. right. Boy. How do you see this? Well, I get to see some old friends back in Dallas. And when I say old friends, I'm talking about the, a lot of the players and the coaches. <laughs> and, and it really will be owner. an exciting ball game. I, I, the owner, too. <laughs> <laughs> it will be an exciting ball game because I I really think that Green Bay goes into this ball game with more confidence than they have ever had since they've been going back there and getting beat all these times. I think that they've got more talent offensively, they're more experienced, and Brett Favre is the hottest player in the National Football League. Brett Favre is going to have to have a monster game because this offense right now looks like it is geared back up. I agree with John Madden. This look, looks more like the Cowboys we've come accustomed to knowing in the two world championship years. Seems like they have people healthy, they're focused. Deion Sanders is back healthy, he's ready to go. If they win this thing and they go on to win the world championship, Barry Switzer's a smart move. Deion Sanders is a smart move. It justifies the signing bonuses, justifies everything he's done. Yeah, Barry Switzer did have this team ready to play. We'll go right back to Kevin Williams. His, his, his coming on the last three weeks and the confidence that Troy built up with him, the arsenal now is, is, goes all the way across the board, and that's very difficult. And you all, all of us agree. The key to Green Bay is Brett Favre, and John Madden is right. He can win it by himself. And when you run the way Deion Sanders ran on that reverse in the NFL, if you're that much faster <laughs> than right. everybody in the NFL, there's something wrong. I tell you one other player, the, the player of the ball game here, Leon Lett. I was fortunate enough before but I became a head coach. I was a defensive line coach for many years, and I had the honor of coaching Leroy Selman at the University of Oklahoma. Leon Lett has the same physical abilities that... Leroy Selman had, and of course he's a Hall of Famer. Hey, folks, want to know how deep is our research staff? Back here, we've got the guy who could be the number one player in the country, certainly a first-round draft choice in Keyshawn Johnson back here, USC, outstanding wide receiver. Well, a good indication to me that Jimmy's going back to the NFL. At halftime, he had Keyshawn take his street shoes off, and in the lots at Fox Park, had him more than 40-yard dash. Ran a 4 hours agent. Hey, folks, hey, folks back. coming up next week is the NFC Championship game coming your way from Texas Stadium and Irving. It'll be the Red Hot Green Bay Packers. Sean Jones, Reggie White, Brett Favre and company against the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see you next week in Texas. Have a good one. <laughs>